Cans. Cans. Which one is tits and which one is aluminium? You might find out, and I don't know about that, with Jim Jeffries. What do you mean, which one's which? <laughs> okay, well, yeah. that's a can. That's a can. Right. Yeah. And then you go, you have nice cans. No one ever these says are cans. that. But, oh, there's cans. There's, I don't know how cans, cans got over the spectrum so much. How it's how it means so Isn't many there different things. There's a place things. in Australia called Cairns. There's a place called Cairns up in the in the tropics. We went there yeah. once. Yeah. Who says yeah. cans for tits anymore? Yeah, she got a nice set of cans. Yeah, she had a nice set of cans. What are you fucking? T- I got nice cans. Yeah, she got Fuck great. You, ca- you got great cans. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Jim. I'll take <laughs> Kelly's word for it. Yeah, <laughs> give them what they want. <laughs> wow, you, so, haven't, you haven't said that in a while. Yeah, I'm yeah, we gotta bring that. Back. I'm trying to act young at the moment because I, <laughs> I, I, I had an incident on the, this morning. So I've got a baby, right? We all have documented that, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I haven't been sleeping very well. And so normally I don't look at the internet or whatever. Jack did a video of me. Of it. I had to pose. I had to do a video to sell tickets for my New York show, which is uh, the Thursday coming up. Friday's already sold out. Mm-hmm. Thursday there's more tickets. No, no. I think your show's passed already, isn't it? No. No, oh, has no. It? okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's coming up. Sorry. Yeah, this Thursday, still tickets. <laughs> Friday sold out. Chicago Theater may be sold out by now. It's very, very close. And Indianapolis, uh, you have plenty 26. of tickets. Just come. Um, <laughs> just show up at the door at Indianapolis. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not gonna. Two for bu- one. I'm not gonna <laughs> bullshit you. There's, there's 700 fucking tickets left. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, so I woke and so when we did the video, it was in my backyard, and I, look, I got a lot of grey in my hair these days, but the sun made it look extra. Spe- you can your see hair, it. Yeah, your hair is really not that grey, but the video, hair, the, the video, yeah. I look very, very grey, right? And so, so I woke up and I went, oh, I wonder how this new video is doing. I never checked the internet. I was sitting there having a shit. I hadn't slept all fucking night. And then it was just people going, how old are you? You look like you're fucking I, I just got in such a mood. For the first time in years, I started responding to people. Well, you're a fat fuck. Why don't you fuck off? You're nothing to fucking look at. And it's always young people that get into you about, oh, you've aged. I'm 44 fucking years old. I don't look like I did. People like, one guy said, you look way older than you did in Alcoholicos when you were drinking. What, from my special 13 years ago? <laughs> yes, I have aged in 13 years, you That's fuck. exactly how time works. And this is the thing to you young people. Go fuck yourself. Age is coming your way. I'm not angry. Anyway, so, and also I'll say this about grey hair. I commend any hair that stays on my fucking head. You will never hear me say a bad word about a hair that's that, that's decided it'll stay on my fucking head. They're the winners. They're the champions of my head. Don't speak ill of them. Mm. So what do you got for us, Jack? <laughs> We're doing the old segment of uh, trying to tell old-timey jokes. So oh. I find these old jokes from uh, specifically this book, The Encyclopedia of Comedy by James Mel- Melville Jansen. It was written in 1895. Why are you holding that up to the camera? You're trying to get on some sales? Oh, I just oh, yeah, yeah. I have a book. Yeah. I have some ad reads here. I thought, geez, Jack's giving me a lot of... <laughs> a lot of jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, geez. They made a lot of jokes about Green Chef back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so we have four jokes each, and we're going to see if we can sell these jokes from 1895. Now, all these jokes I pulled from a section of the book called Witty Sayings. So we'll mm. see how witty these are. Love witty jokes. Jim, also, you can also, I was so angry this morning that I blocked like 50 people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I blocked one guy. <laughs> one guy, one guy goes, like this, he goes, oh, you've become 75 years old. I said, well, you've become a complete cunt. Like this, he goes, oh, Jim Jeffries just called me a cunt, made my fucking day. You're my favorite comedian. Blocked. That's not a bad mood I was in. And then I looked at everyone who liked his comment. I blocked all those cunts as well. <laughs> Are you going to leave him blocked? Yeah, fuck him. I love fuck the him. pettiness. The cunt, the cunt lived in Argentina. He's not buying a ticket. Okay. I was going <laughs> to say. not buying a ticket. Why? So, so Netflix gets less subscription. He's not cancelling because of me. They've still got many other quality products. If he wants to watch the Queen's Gambit, he has to fucking keep his subscription. <laughs> anyway, here's a joke. <laughs> Jones? Why is he called Jones? Is I don't know. I don't name know. There's a Jones person? here too. I don't know. There was a couple Jones. I don't know who Jones is. I, I don't think know why this Jones, is was a, Jones was a local idiot back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's Jonesing. I could don't be, know. It could be. Jones has a goat that is such a good butter. That is such a good butter. I think a head butter. Oh, butter. I thought he was it's like a, a dairy product. Yeah, it took me a while to put together. He okay, Jones butter. has a, a goat that is such a good butter that he is named Olay margarine. Oh, it is a butter. Margarine, yeah. Olay, Olay margarine. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. Is, is that the punchline of that joke? Or is, it, is no, this, no, this, no, this no, one joke? Because yeah. yeah. it yeah. goes straight into an Irishman yeah. <laughs> had a fight with a Jew. Now, we'll come back to that joke. <laughs> we'll come back to that. You can all think about what the Irishman the Jew were fighting about. Oh. It was probably something to do with someone being stupid, no doubt. <laughs> Right. Okay, um, I got a man. I got a man a job chewing icicles off the roof of <laughs> the city hall. Yeah. This is good. He lent his teeth to a man to play dominoes and couldn't get them back again, so he is now gumming stamps in the post office. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. That's story a good, was that's that? Classic. That's just like a sad tale. <laughs> I, I, I this could, re- could rewrite job. that joke and make it real good. <laughs> oh, you could. All right, he's chewing icicles. Why would he even be doing that? Out the, <laughs> the, roof. That's the, the funny bit is that he's doing it at City Hall. That is hilarious. Uh, that yeah. is. It's ironic. Why? Because they could yeah, afford to he... hire somebody else. Uh, to no, chew but the also icicles. it's a government. Job. Why would you give someone such a silly government job? <laughs> but hold on, but wait, wait. But then he lends. Is that what my taxes are going to? No, no, no. no, no, no. Hold on. He lent, he lends his teeth now to a man to play dominoes. Why? I don't, I don't, Why do you need him to play dominoes? No. And so then couldn't get them back. So chewing the icicles made his teeth fall out, and then he lent them. No, no, to no. Play he, do- he was he was hired to chew off the icicles of right. his teeth, but okay. Ah, oh, oh, crap. I'm hired for this gig, but I have no teeth now because I lent them to my friend to play dominoes. Yeah, yeah. How do you just lend your but teeth how do you, to how somebody? How do you chew the icicles off without his teeth? I don't know. What's the dominoes going on? I don't know. He's playing dominoes, but the thing is now he's doing post. He, he works for the post office. He's Another still, government job. Yeah, but the, the government the government did him right, man. Yeah. Like he could yeah. have, this is before it's, unions, he'd lost his icicle chewing true. job and they still gave him another position at point. the post office. So, yeah, it's pretty, so fu- I, it's pretty funny. So government no, I think good? That. I think, this is a joke. Good. I think this is a, a joke, joke about the government doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. And it's a good joke. And that's why it's so hilarious. I take it back. It's a good joke. <laughs> good joke. All right. What what other hilarious things? Okay. Do um, a friend of mine was arrested for cruelty to animals. Oh, no. He was working in a grocery store bottling cats up. All right, yeah, yeah. 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 That's witty. Yeah. That's yeah. a witty yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's witty. Yeah. All right. They gave him a job to lay over. read all these? Yeah. Yeah. They gave him a job to lay over a hole in the roof to keep the rain out. He went to sleep with what his mouth. What do you mouth- mean they? Why did they start in the middle of a story? <laughs> <laughs> this is like when we make, when we make Jack read erotica. Yeah, yeah, okay. and I just start with no background. Yeah. So this guy who had to cover the hole, he went to sleep with his mouth open and nearly got drowned. <sighs> Crazy. <laughs> Wait. Uh, I hear that's how Bon Scott died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I read it? Yeah, the guy, they gave him a job to lay over a hole in the roof to keep the rain out. So yeah. he fell asleep when it was raining with his mouth open and almost drowned. Yeah, because yeah, he's a moron. He <laughs> doesn't realize when his mouth's filled with water while he's sleeping. Yeah. Probably an Irishman. <laughs> what year are these from again? 1895. Or at least uh, that's when the book was published. Who knows how long it took to co- yeah, file yeah. it? This is like in the Civil War. Like, I got a good joke. 1995 <laughs> had similar jokes. It's a bit, lot more grungy. <laughs> All right, Jim. Jim. Okay. An Irishman had a fight with a Jew. <laughs> The Jew got the best of it. No, there's more to it. <laughs> but you, know, you, know, you would think that the Jewish guy would lose the fight to the Irishman. Just, no, okay, I don't know. Okay. The, the Jew got the best of it. In about three weeks afterwards, the Jew died. Oh, that's no good. And then the Irishman, to get even with him, went to the cemetery and beat the Jew's grave with a ham. <laughs> with a ha- What the fuck? Because Jews, Jews yeah, don't eat pork. I, I okay, get that part of it, but first of all, if you did that today, that would you'd be that'd That's be a, a hate, hate crime, crime yeah. to the dead. If you went and beat someone's grave with a ham, a, a yeah. I always use. I, 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 have, I have a person who I dislike very much that I do say that when they die, I will not dance on their grave because it's too hard to dance while you're shitting. <laughs> <laughs> And beating it with a ham. <laughs> we were going so fast, we smashed into another team, and it took a wheel off the dog's tail. Yeah, Ned. Another guy, Ned. Ned's a, yeah. Ned's, 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 Ned's a white, white guy. guy all day. Nonsense. Whoever heard of a wheel on a dog's tail? Wagons have wheels. Old David said, "Well, this dog's tail was a wagon." Okay, so Ned. <laughs> so so <laughs> Ned is a derogatory term. I think it's Irish. It might be Scottish. I think it's Scottish. Oh, wow. Uh, Ned's a derogatory term for white trash who uh, live in council estates and stuff like that. Fucking Neds, they say. Yeah. Wow. This, says, this says a young person who behaves in a rude and sometimes violent or criminal way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Neds. It's, wow. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Like scallies. Criminals. And, yeah. 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 
it. Well, thanks, Jack. You're welcome. All right. We learned something today. Yeah, did we? Kelly? Okay. When history tells us Adam was in the garden, it does not tell us what kind of garden it was, but we have every reason to believe it was a beer garden because Adam saw snakes. <laughs> yeah, he's drunk, you see. Cool story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They're going to change the name of Central Park to Central <clears throat> Orchard. You know why? Because there are so many pears under the trees. Mm. I guess people make out under the trees. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we don't have to read all these, right? I know. I got a good one. Okay. <laughs> Pat, that's his name. Not like the ones that you gave Forrest, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Good thing I can't be canceled. Yeah. This is yeah, like long-term revenge on Forrest. Yeah. It's just such yeah, a slow play. I haven't finished it. Pat the Japanese, I can't even say the next one. <laughs> Marita? <Pat. laughs> He's dead. And Pat Marita. Uh, the karate kid, <laughs> Jesus. Pat, how much will it you take for the broad faced turkey on the fence. Broad faced. Broad faced. Oh, that makes it all different. Yeah. Broad faced turkey on the fence. Farmer, that's not a turkey. That's an owl. Pat, sure. I didn't care how owled he is. Mm -hmm. You know, old. Yeah, yeah. But it's owl. No, don't worry. I'm just My letting it sink in. My wife's hair is so red that when she goes out in the yard at night, the roosters take it for sunrise and begin to crow. Next joke. <laughs> <laughs> We've only just got one more each. Uh, Mr. A, I went into a saloon and ordered a Man Manhattan cocktail. Mr. B, did you get yeah. it? Let's keep it rolling. Mr. A, no, the Manhattan any. <laughs> All right, keep it going. Keep it going. Jimmy. Speed round. Say, Wallace, why don't you settle down and take a wife? Wallace, I would, but I don't know whose wife to take. Oh, yeah. That's not a bad old gang. All right. You here sound we like go. QAnon drops. Last joke. Last joke. Right, you ready? You ready? You ready? Jones. He's, he's back again. Jones. He's back again. I got a Jones one, too. Yeah. Jones had a dream the other night. He dreamt he owed a man $10. Wait, I have this joke, too. Okay, keep yeah, going. But, but it's different interpretation. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, owed a man ten dollars. He woke up to found it was true. He's afraid to go to sleep again for fear he might pay him. Yeah, what? I have that same joke here. All right, let's see how you read it. Yeah, because I didn't understand it. Jones, <laughs> oh, had a dream. Do it as Jerry Seinfeld. The other night, I can't do impressions. <laughs> Jones had he a dream. He what did he have? Ten dollars. He woke up and found it was true. He's afraid. All right, do I'm it. Do, okay, just do it as a little homage to, to the great Norm MacDonald. Do, do it as Norm MacDonald. Come on. I just threw it on the ground. Hey, Jones had a dream uh, the other night. Uh, uh, he dreamed he was. <laughs> That's a terrible impression. Was, uh, is, uh, is that. Um, it's Norm MacDonald. That was me. No, Norm that was. It's Cliff Clavin. I can only do one impersonation. <laughs> hey, how you doing? All right, I'll do my last one as Forrest. Uh, when I was down at Long Branch last summer, I took a piece of soap along with me. <laughs> so if the undertow was too strong, I could wash myself ashore. That, that was uh, so far. I don't know. I don't that was know. really good. It's hilarious. Yeah, speed it up. Yeah. <laughs> I hate fun. Is this fun? This is really fun. This is really oh, fun. Okay, oh, my last one. Here we go. You haven't been with a baby all night and woken up to be told you're old. This is the <laughs> best part of me day. <laughs> I went into the country this summer for a change and rest, <laughs> but I didn't get it. The waiters got all the change and the landlord got the rest. Oh. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Tax uh, the rich, baby. James Ooh. Melville Jensen. Let's read. Let's read the, 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 the ads. Adverts. Time for ads. I tell you what, you might not think I'm good at these ad reads, but I'll tell you who, you can believe this in, I'll tell you who's bad at ad reads, the entire LA Dodgers. They, they do a thing, they do a thing about recycling on the radio like this. They're like, hey, this is Justin Turner. My biggest hits aren't on the park. My biggest hits is throwing my recycling in the bin. We, we all have to contribute to recycling. And Walker Bueller does one where he's reading the words like they're independent in the fucking sentences. Hey, LA, my best throw pitches aren't on the field. They're throwing trash in the bin. Ah, come on. And then they used to do another one where fucking, I think Adrian Gonzalez used to talk about dumping furniture on the curb and not to do it. Anyway. <laughs> They're helping out, the Dodgers. One little bit of garbage at a time. Better help. Look, I'm in therapy. You might not know that about me. You might look at me and you think to yourself, that guy doesn't need therapy. He's so well put together. Well, everyone gets old. It's just a bit of fucking grey hair. <laughs> anyway, everyone can benefit from therapy. Talking to your friends and family is overrated. Uh, get, <laughs> get a therapist 
and get better. Family. Yeah, well, you can say things to therapists that you yeah, know, you don't want to rely things, on people. You don't want to burden things people. Things I can't say yeah. to Forrest that I can say to a therapist. Yeah, like, of course. I long for Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> Better help will assess your needs. I was going to say kill, want to kill, but then I thought I'll make it sexual. It's all gone, Squiff. Forrest has great cans. Oh, you yeah, great Ooh, cans. Great, great cans. Can. Da, 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 da. That was the can-can. Can. <laughs> uh, better help will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help. It's professional counselling done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available which may not otherwise be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. That's the whole fucking world. So you people on the space station can go suck a dick. <laughs> you can log into your account. Actually, they could probably use it. Yeah. They've got the Wi-Fi up there. Space station yeah. people, I know you feel alone. Get better help. <laughs> you can log into your account. Oh, they're probably mentally strong. They are astronauts. Yeah. Anyway, anyone can use this. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. Counselor, You'll get a timely and thoughtful response, plus you can schedule weekly videos or photo sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy to uh, and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional off- offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp. Wants you to start living a happier life today. Check out the thousands of reviews online if you need to take someone else's word for it. But you can just take mine. Visit better. <laughs> Did you read that right? You no, know, I put different. I'm like Christopher Walken. I put, put different emphasis on different That's words. That's the impression. What makes me uh, Christopher yeah, yeah, Walken. Yeah, it's Christopher Walken. Yeah, yeah visit betterhelp.com <laughs> slash ADK. Ooh, that's better, H-E-L-P. That was, that was Homer Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> and join the over one million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using better help. They are recruiting an additional counsellors, well, more than one additional counsellor in all 50 states. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and the I Don't Know About That listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash IDK. Big fan of therapy. Go do that. Look, when I'm at home, I like to feel comfortable and nothing makes you feel more comfortable or at home than good furniture. Mm -hmm. Good furniture says a lot about who you are and what you're like. You know, you go in someone's house, they have shitty furniture, probably a shitty person. (laughs) I don't know about that. Maybe they just can't afford it. Joy-bird selection of customizable furniture and modern home decor lets you bring your own unique style into your space. Joybird offers modern, customized furniture for every space available in a variety of vibrant, Durable fabric options. You want to have durable, especially you've got kids, things mm-hmm. get poured on. You want something that's going to mm-hmm. last. You don't want the shit from bloody these packaged flatbed bloody furniture stores with shit. You want mm-hmm. your Joybird quality. And with summer winding down, Joybird has all the modern outdoor furniture and accessories you need to make the most of your patio hangs. Ooh. Now, my favorite room in my house is my bedroom. And then there's a room off there, the, the bathroom I like. Mm, I like all my rooms. Yeah. I like all my rooms except my office because my office is filled with shit that I have to do that I haven't done. <laughs> that's where that, the litter box yeah, is. That ro- yeah, that's where the cat's shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that room can go to hell. I can't even imagine you in an office. It's not. I don't even use a computer. I used to work on a TV show where I had my own office. Yeah, but. Yeah, I used but... to just sit behind the desk and. <laughs> Masturbate every now and again. (laughs) You weren't like sitting at a desk doing anything. It was like lying on a couch. Nobody was in there. (laughs) I think I said it. I was in there. there. I I didn't do that. That was just me being funny. So Joybird, yeah. Joybird, choose from from over 18,000 customized options. 18,000? That's a lot of bits of furniture. Or browse curated collections to find the perfect piece for your one-of-a-kind style. From design to ongoing care, Joybird has you covered. Un- unsure where to start? Yeah, I'm, I'm unsure where to start. Just in many things. Mm-hmm. Lucky Joybird's here to help me out with furniture. Joybird's design specialists are standing by 
to make your vision a reality for free. I actually think this part's really cool. It like is so cool. you you go on there and some it like tells somebody what your style is and they help you stuff because not everybody's an interior designer. I, I had an interior designer work for me. It was the best thing I ever did in my life because I used to buy nice bits of furniture, but they never matched up with other right. bits. I yeah. had all these individual pieces that never really set up with the other bits. And you can go on, you go to the designer and go, I just I don't know what I like, but I want it to feel like I want it to match. I want it to feel like Ron Burgundy lives there, Ooh, right? Yeah. And then you, yeah, they know. Wait, what is that, that what you told them? Leather bound books. No, I didn't tell him that. I just, I, I didn't say that. I said match the house to match my my style. Mm. There was a lot of hate things on the wall. We had to <laughs> we had to paint over. Um, from like, this, I hate vegetables. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it was just like fuck you to my wife. <laughs> There was one argument. I did it in a big brush. <laughs> With Joybird's protection plan, your upholstery and leather pieces will always look as good and as new without having to treat them like they're a museum. And with financing rates as low as 0% APR for up to 36 months, you can now relax and pay later. Joybird is committed to creating quality furniture and more sustainable furniture. Each piece is made with incredible care using re- uh, res- responsibly sourced materials Free of harmful chemicals, chemical chemicals. <laughs> Though partnerships with groups like One Tree Planted, gee, they, well, that was a good business until they got rid of their one bit of product. Uh, Joy, <laughs> they've got other trees. Joy Bird is helping conserve and restore the Earth's most precious natural resources, like sand, the Ooh. handshake that the Earth makes uh, with the yep. sea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the one. Quality craftsmanship. Stain and scratch resistant fabrics and limited lifetime warranty, Joybird Furniture can handle anything your family throws at it. Literally. 90 day returns. <laughs> 90 day returns. That's good too. That's three months, depending on the months you have. It could be less than three months if February's included in that month. More if you got one <laughs> oh. of those ones. You know that rhyme, 30 days has September. Every, the, no one knows right. which days have what. But if you're ordering furniture online, you want to be able to test it out because you can never tell if it's comfortable. So that's yeah, good. Yeah. But, yeah. And also, right look, on. I don't, I'm not telling you how to, how to live your life, but if you've only got 90 days left before you die and the doctor's oh, told you that. Free couch. Get yourself some free joy bird. <laughs> Send it back. I didn't like it on the last day. Enjoy those last 90 <laughs> days. your last day on earth just doing furniture returns. <laughs> that's why, you, gotta get this yeah. that's why you have a jack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're on your deathbed, you jack lean in there, get rid of the gout. <laughs> okay, I want that money back. <laughs> Gotta buy some more morphine. All right, Joybird stands by its quality and craftsmanship. It's not every if if it's not everything you hope for, send it back. You need to be everything you hope for. Create a space that brings you joy with Joybird. Visit joybird.com slash I D K A T and get Three percent off. They've written thirty percent here, but very clearly that would be a typo. Yeah. There's no way they would offer what thirty <laughs> percent off your purchase. Normally these bloody companies give ten percent and twenty percent. Not Joybird. That's thirty percent off at Joybird.com/slash/idkat. All right. Uh, please welcome our guest today, Myron Mixon. Now it's time to play. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Judging a book by its cover. Are you here to talk about barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you guess that? Yeah. Well, our friend, our friend Dave Williamson's here sitting with some of the best looking barbecue I've ever seen. Uh, I'm, I don't eat pork anymore, but I'm going to have a go at that brisket and that stuff that looks like pork. It's sheep, right? I can eat that. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. <laughs> yes. Um, Myron Mixon is our guest today. He is a five-time world barbecue champion with over 200 grand championships, 30 state championships, eight team of the year awards, and 11 national championships. Oh, yeah. Myron Mixon is the winningest man in barbecue. He has TV shows called Barbecue Pitmasters, Barbecue Rules, Smoked, and Barbecue Pit Wars, all on Discovery's Destination America and the Cooking Channel. And he has a New York Times bestselling author. Oh, he is a New York Times bestselling author of Smokin' with Myron Mixon. Uh, and he has a uh, restaurant, Myron Mixon's Pitmaster Barbecue Restaurants. There's one in Alexandria, Virginia, and one that will be opening in Hoboken, New Jersey, I think now. And uh, he's also the mayor. He's the freaking mayor. Say, yeah. he's the mayor of, a, of a town in Georgia. Unadilla, is that how you pronounce it? Unadilla. Unadilla. Yeah, Forrest told me that right before we started recording, and I go, what? <laughs> yeah. 
That's one dealer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Myron, thank you for being on the show. Can you just tell us? I mean, I said a lot about you, but just can you tell us how you became a pit master and got in the barbecue and became a mayor? Yeah, uh, my dad used to have, uh, when he was alive, had to take out barbecue business, had it for years. And when I was like nine years old, he started me out helping him. I mean, this is where you burn the coals down, shovel it, a lot of labor intensive stuff here. And he didn't grab me up and put me out there to make me a, a world famous pit master. He grabbed me up because I was free labor. <laughs> right. to tote, you know, tote, fetch, go get. And, uh, but even, uh, you know, small kid working into a teenager. You know, that wasn't really what she wanted to do. Well, I didn't want to do. Mm. But even under duress, you learn. And as I got older and learned and watched the way he handled me and got, you know, turned out great product. People loved it. You know, as a kid, you love accolades. You love people patting you on the back when you do something good. And uh, I learned. I mean, I, I learned it and I got good at it. And uh, that led me into being in competitions and started competing in 1996. Matter of fact, in June, when he passed away in January, he never got to saw me compete. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, I probably would have never got competed if he'd have been alive because he looked at it like that was playing. That wasn't working. Oh. But anyway, we started in 1996 and that's where the, the, the venture started, the, the all adventure started and, uh, winning and uh, very lucky, very blessed started winning out of the gate, winning all the time, I guess you could say. And when TV came along looking for barbecue shows at that time, you know, they did the research and start searching for uh, people to be on the shows that has experience in competing. And my name come up and that really what pushed it over the top. And by being on TV and put my name and face out front, um, it led to having a sauce and rub company, which we still sell a lot of product online. And now we're wholesaling. Uh, even in companies like uh, Ace Hardware all across the country, 6,000 plus stores. we got restaurants now. We write cookbooks. I've been teaching cook schools since 2005. I see about 7,000 students a year. Oh. Uh, so, and we got our own smoker division now. We have a smoker plants in Waterford, Connecticut. So it led to a lot of things. And I can credit only my dad for teaching me and for TV making me I guess out front in front of a lot of folks and they've just uh, been blessed. It's been a fun ride. Awesome. Well, I, I often get criticism for on this podcast and in my stand up, people think I bash on America too much. They say that I, I if, if I want to live here, I shouldn't say yeah. something. And I, I feel it's mostly in jest. I'm like, here I go. Australians can't do barbecue for shit in comparison to the Americans. Oh. The Americans, hands down, the Australian barbecues are really just throwing sausages on and flipping a steak and going, oh, no, this American, like, like you were talking about how you've been in so many competitions. I always find it weird when you go into a restaurant and they go, and we have award-winning meatloaf, our, the best pecan pie. And I'm like, where are these fucking competitions? But <laughs> but barbecuing is like a legitimate thing where I can see it's an actual competition. I've watched a lot of the TV shows and the people who are the great pit masters and stuff like that. Uh, how many competitions would you say you do a year? Back in the day, from 96 to probably mid-2010s, I used to average like 45 contests a year. Holy right. shit, what? But That's now, with, with, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was going 45 easy. And uh, I have done 50 in a year, and it was only 52 weeks in a year. But now with all the other businesses, we got uh, one restaurant, the second one's opening the end of this month, 1st of October, Smoker Division, all the other stuff. I may get to do four or five a year now instead right. of 45. Do you have well, like – do you have like people in your industry where you're like fucking this hack? <laughs> so they're like coming in with their shitty chicken. I don't know what they're fucking doing. Or there's one person who's like your nemesis. It's like if I could do ribs like that fucker. <laughs> well, let me tell you what. I have more of the first part of that as you said than I did the second part of that. <laughs> uh, you know, when I judge on barbecue pit masters, uh, I cook them mainly on the east, uh, southeast, and northeast. And I do go out Midwest a lot of times, but a lot of times I get to judge people that have a reputation in their certain area that I've never got to go to. And I look over to my fellow judges like, you know, damn, we fixed to get to eat some great stuff. I've seen him, you know, in some of the barbecue papers and stuff like that. And you eat it and you're like, dang, it tastes like cat food mass. And I mean, <laughs> 
Um, before we keep going, we, we have a, a friend of ours in studio, Dave Williamson, who is a very funny comedian, and um, but also, a, what would you say, a barbecue enthusiast? Yeah, that's a... Because you're in front of Myron Mixon right now. Yeah. I'm very cautious not to call myself an expert. Okay, but I, over the years, Myron, in, in the past, I don't know how many years, he's got really into barbecue and... Um, Obsessed. He, yeah, and he's he's made, he's brought... Well, you can you can talk. Do you want to hold up the camera and say, yeah. have, have, have Marin t- say whether it's yeah, any good? Yeah, let's do that before I slice it because it all looks good before. You. I don't care how many briskets you make, they can look great and you can think you did great, but you're always still scared that you're going to cut into it. And it's going to be like that scene on National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation where the turkey just like <laughs> is all dried out. Yeah. So it's always, it's. I, I feel the I, same I way little, about having kids. A little, <laughs> little small brisket there, and I did some beef ribs. Yeah, and I did yeah. uh, I did some pork ribs as well, and uh, I, I I didn't do very well with my sleep schedule last night, and uh, my timer didn't wake me up, so I had to get a real little creative and go hot and fast this morning to get them done in time. But I still am confident we'd end up all right. Are you nervous right now, Dave? In front of my own, I'm Mexico. always nervous. Dave. Yeah, but <laughs> it doesn't I mean, matter how many times. Well, we're going to eat this probably and be like, this is great. But but it's like up. when you have a bad set and people are like, hey, man, you were awesome. But you know, in your mind, like, nah, I messed something up. Yeah, but yeah, everyone's yeah. like, no, it was great. Like, no, it wasn't, you know? <laughs> I've learned over time with comedy just to let them have the experience that they had. Yeah. Like, you always go, no, last night was good. This was shit tonight. Yeah. You go, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And then you walk away. <laughs> Well, Myron just won the grand championship at Memphis in May. I was there. It was my first time ever going to a big competition like that. And uh, it seems like you, you love it just as much now as you did uh, back in the day because you were pumped when your name was, was called. There, was, oh, there, yeah. was there big crowns, Dave, sure. there? Did you, did you find it hard to walk around with your erection? Uh, <laughs> I was very excited. That is not a lie. I was the the first comedian to perform at the Memphis of May. They said they've had strippers and DJs and everything else you can think of, but never a comedian. Did, did the they, most okay, salacious career. Thing. Do you remember, like, okay, when I was a kid, we used to go to like things that was a prawn festival. I used to go to, and they used to just have the wet t shirt competition just out in the public in the middle of the day. <laughs> and I, I, the first time I saw titties was like they used to pour water over these women, and you'd stand there with your dad, like. Oh, this is a bit of a learning thing for the boy. <laughs> a lot of boobs on men at the at the Memphis of May. <laughs> Did they ever do wet t-shirt? Or was that an Australian thing? Do you ever have wet they have t-shirt? A yeah, they have. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know if it was an Australian thing. Okay. Um, all right, Myron. Uh, and uh, by the way, if anything else that you want to find out about Myron Mixon or any of the stuff I said, it's at MyronMixon.com. That's M-Y-R-O-N, M-I-X-O-N.com. And um, so, Myron, uh, I'm going to ask Dave. Uh, Dave, I'm gonna ask uh, Jim a few questions. Well, should Dave start slicing? I'm gonna start slicing while you guys are talking. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask uh, Jim some questions about barbecue, oh, yeah, and then yeah. um, at the end of these questions, we'll see how Jim did. You can grade him zero through ten, ten being accurate and zero not being good at all. Yeah. Um, and then Kelly's gonna grade him on confidence. I'm gonna grade him at cetera. We'll add all the scores together. Twenty one through thirty are spare rib, Jim. Eleven through twenty bruised rib. Zero through ten a McRib. You don't want to be a McRib. What? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> What is barbecue, Jim? Yeah, that's a tricky question. I assume BBQ is short for something, probably the word barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying the word barbecue. <laughs> no, I wasn't yeah, saying BBQ. Look at that. There's the brisket. Look at that, look at that. Can you see that, it? Myron? Is that the- Put that smile on Myron. Right, okay. Yeah, but take oh. it up to the camera. Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, we okay. want you to see Jen- Dave's brisket on the camera here. With the- and be <laughs> honest, don't suck up to him. He's, yeah, yeah. You know, he's, right. he's, he, yeah, can, yeah. he can deal with the criticism. I tell you what, it's very juicy. I mean, how does it bite? That's the way you really got to judge. Everybody wants you to look. Okay. I see smoke ring. You got to bite it. If it's a smooth chew, a silky bite, that's what you want. All right. Yeah, We're getting there. We're getting there. Some. We're getting there. Right. It looks good. It looks good. All right. All right. So ask me, ask me some questions. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to ask him all the questions at once, and we'll come back and answer them. We'll do, do it right. that Okay. We'll right. just do it. That'll be easy. That way Jim, uh, Dave can cut um, the meat. It's, it's, it's food that's cooked over a flame, whether it be coals or you can you can barbecue, you know, with gas. So my outdoor barbecue has gas. But I think traditional yeah. barbecue has to be an open flame or coals okay. or from wood or what have you. What is the barbecue capital of America? See, tech, there's a lot of arguments. Texas will say it's them. Kansas will say it's them. Memphis will say it's them. I'm going to go Kansas. What is the difference between barbecue and grilling? Ah, uh, fuck me. Um, <laughs> bar- bar- barbecuing involves more smoking than grilling. Grilling is a direct flame onto a thing where a barbecue is low and slow, where the meat is cooked over time, where you grill a steak, is just a flip. You get grill marks. Barbecuing is something that takes time. All right. What is a pitmaster? 
pitmaster is the person who knows how to who who runs the pit, who runs the temperature and checks it. I've watched the pitmaster show. The people who do it, the best barbecue in the world. I've, I've watched a lot of that. Yeah, I, I live with a vegan. It was hard to do. It was like <laughs> it was like sneaking porn. It was. <laughs> <laughs> what is the difference between a spare rib and a baby back rib? Uh, the 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 spare rib is the bit that you don't eat at the end. Okay. No, no, spare rib's the big bit and the baby back bit's the bit at the back of the ribs. The spare rib's the upper bit of the ribs, the the the, 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 the front of the ribs, and then the, the baby back of the little tiny, the end bit because the rib tapers off. And what animal are they from? Pigs. Okay. What is brisket? Where is that from? Brisket is a Jewish thing, I believe that that, that it is, but that's a beef animal, and it's and it's a it's a fatty pit of the of the thing, and it's a smoked meat. Okay. Um, is there anything you can't barbecue? Well, by law, <laughs> there's, there's plenty of things: plastic, <laughs> foods. I'm talking yeah. about foods. People, foods, uh, foods. Um, you you can barbecue chicken, you can barbecue thing, you can barbecue. I, I, I believe Cake. you smoke fish. <laughs> you smoke fish. Does, I'm talking about meats. You smoke fish. I assume that's considered barbecuing. So I say you can do fish. I'm going to say you can basically barbecue. You can barbecue vegetables. I, I'm going to say yes, you can barbecue any food. All right. How do you smoke breakfast cereal? Breakfast cereal. Okay. Mm. How do you smoke meat? Like how does it? How do you do it? Um. Low and slow. <laughs> you put, you Where's put, the slow and slow? You that's keep right. I watch the shows, man. Yeah, okay. And uh, also hickory is a big thing, and there's different types of wood, and you put that in, and the wood gives the flavor from the wood that smokes into it. I've never done it myself. I have people like Dave in my life. Okay. Um, <laughs> barbecue is different in different parts of the United States. Uh, like, like, for instance, how is barbecue different in Texas versus Tennessee? I believe that Texas has a bit more of a spice to their sauce because of maybe the Mexican influence from being on the border. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that like Kansas has like a sweeter um, type of uh, barbecue sauce that they go for. What about Tennessee and Kansas, ten ten uh, North Carolina, Tennessee, Tennessee have the hot chicken and stuff like that. I think I think Nashville, I think Nashville has hot sauce as well. Um, Carolina would be a sweet sauce. That sounds like a sugary type of thing. I'm probably wrong on all this. Okay. Um, barbecue competitions. Is there like a difference? What's the difference between cooking for a bunch of people and for judges? Uh, judges are going to judge you. Right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> They'll be like, this is not good. I like this. This was bad. This was good. And regular people will be like, thanks for the meat, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Last question. Um, in a barbecue competition, like what do you win? And like if, like if it's money, how much money can you win? Like what, what do you think the top prizes are and stuff? Oh, it's delicious. Got a good bite to it, man. You're not supposed to be eating yet. You got to answer the last question. I'll tell you what that is. I'll be a judge of that. <laughs> it is very good. That was good. All right. Very good. What do you win in a barbecue competition? Though? Uh, you would win something like there would be a trophy that looked like a hot poker. <laughs> there might be one that looks like a spatula of some kind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe an apron with tits on it. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Myron Mixon, uh, how do you think Jim did answering those questions on barbecues? Ten's the best, zero's the worst. Be honest. Uh, I'm looking at my notes here. I just went down like question one. Um, <laughs> one, two, three, four. I got him down four of them is about the worst. Yeah, uh, all right, okay. all right. Yeah. I'm telling you, so that's not bad. I mean, four out of eleven. I mean, he's not. Uh, I mean, you know, do you have do you have Australians compete? They must be dog shit, right? Like, not like the level of the New Zealand barbecue masters, but like, like, do you ever have like? Is is it popular in Australia? Because I feel like night and day, American barbecue is better than Australian barbecue. Is that is that the case, or am I just being uh, yes? Uh, a let me tell you Australian? this. <laughs> let me tell you this. Uh, like I told you, I've been doing classes since 2005. And I do about 7,000 students, uh, you know, has come through my class since that period of time. I mean, we wind up, uh, I do 10 classes a year. Uh, we get 700 a year goes through there. But anyway, majority of my uh, students when I first started was people in America want to learn how to compete. Mm. Nowadays, because of the barbecue shows, I have people from all over the world, especially pre-pandemic that were coming here. And I was averaging probably five to 10 people from Australia and New Zealand at every one of my classes, like from 17 wow. to 19. 
And the reason for that, I've had people from Israel, I've had them from Indonesia, I've had them from Japan, China. You've, n- you've never had any British people, would you? They'd be like, so how yeah. long do you boil the meat? <laughs> <laughs> the point I'm making here is every every society has its own type of barbecue. They, I mean, just generations back, just like us, for hundreds of years. But that being said, all of these countries want to do Americanized barbecue. Yeah, They look at us as the epitome. They look at us as the ones that if they didn't start it, we perfected it. So they want to do what we do. Mm-hmm. That's why they come to the classes. That's, I mean, we got a uh, representative in Australia that sells all of my products. They buy mm-hmm. by the, the cargo loads of my smokers, rubs, sauces. They're on Facebook all the time over there. And uh, we sell a lot of products in Australia. And I can tell you this, I went and visited about three years ago and did some uh, events over there. And they got competitions now. And they're legit. Mm. You got some people are doing the legit thing over there. Mm. Yeah, I'll have to visit. I'll get right. some of that. Right, stop hating on Australia. How did, <laughs> how did Jim do in confidence, Kelly? Um, I give him a seven. Seven and a four. Um, I'll give you a one and a setter. You're a bruised rib. Jim doesn't care anymore. There's food going in front of his face now. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Winning season has started off hot with, but my bookie's continuing to crank up the heat with a fifty thousand dollar survivor contest. Whether you're a new or existing customer, if you've made a deposit with my bookie, you will earn an entry into the $50,000 $50, Survivor Contest absolutely free. Why wouldn't you enter that? It's free and you could win $50,000 to play. All you have to do is pick one winner a week to keep your streak alive and have a shot at the grand prize. Ooh. Start off strong with a Ravens pick against the Lions who have beaten Baltimore, who haven't beaten Baltimore since Lamar Jackson was in the second grade or ride a hungry Steelers squad looking to get back into their historical dominance over the Bengals. I don't follow the NFL. I've just read these things out loud. <laughs> the Bengals, they're the Tigers? Where are they from? Well, the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati. 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 Either way, it's simple to play and win, <laughs> even if you don't have a ton of experience, which is why I always choose my bookie for... NFL contest. I I use my bookie for the baseball, and I do bet on the Super Bowl with my bookie. My bookie's my uh, site. Head to mybookie.ag now and get in the competition and use my promo code IDK to receive double your first deposit and get instant access to the 50K Survivor Pool. Again, that's promo code IDK to instantly double your first deposit. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. (laughs) <laughs> All right, uh, Myron, what exactly is barbecue? Jim said it's food that's cooked over a flame, whether it be coal, gas, open flame. Is that a good description? I mean, he's, yeah, I mean, he's pretty correct on that. I mean, the thing about it is barbecue is the main, I call the main title. And up under that, you got subtitles. And you have smoking, where you're actually cooking lower temps. You know, I like to cook hot and fast on smoking. I'm up there around 300 degrees. I'm not doing the 225 stuff. But you're actually smoking and putting smoke in a pan smoking. You're not really cooking this for a longer period of time. Grilling is the other subtitle of barbecuing. And that's where you're doing hot and fast. Like searing steaks, you're running the temps on those coals, direct heat, 500 to 800 degrees. You know, so that's the difference. But both of them are barbecue. And it's just, you know, a lot of times you see people, well, you know, grilling is not barbecue. Well, yes, it is. Mm. No, it's just like smoking. It's just a different subtitle of barbecue. Mm. So he was correct. Okay. Mm. Does it bother you that we're eating right now while we're doing this? I hope not. Well, the thing about it is I'm around barbecue every day, been around barbecue <laughs> all my life. And the only barbecue I eat is at my restaurant when I'm going in and sampling, making everything's up to par. Yeah. I am. My favorite food is fried chicken. Ah. All right. yeah. Have you mastered that? Oh yeah, for uh, sure. We got some. Well, I do great fried chicken, but I can tell you this: of the barbecue that I like now, because I was born, raised eating pork. When you're from the South, and I'm from Georgia, well, when you talked about barbecue, and still to this day, you talk about pork, mm-hmm. and just like in Texas, they're talking about beef. Yeah, those beef ribs you got there, that's mm-hmm. my new fave. I teach them in class, and I love a great beef rib. These and are it looks fantastic. like you did. They look awesome. I mean, really and truly, I'm not saying that to kiss your ass, but they look good. <laughs> hey, wow. Myron, talk a little bit about the difference uh, between cooking just like this for your friends versus cooking for a judge who's going to take one yeah, bite. Yeah, that, that was one of the questions at the end there. Jim said, um, Jim said, if you're cooking for judges, they're going to judge you, and then regular people are going to be like, thanks for the meat, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, he's right, and and, and they, but you need a little bit more in there. Uh, you got to always remember when you're doing uh, stuff at home for your friends and for uh, friends and your family, or you're cooking for the church. As long as it's free, you can give them a dog turd on a bun, uh, a bun, and they're gonna say it's it's wonderful. I mean, I mean, really, they're gonna say that. But the thing I tell people when I'm teaching classes is the recipe that I do for my friends and family is the same recipe that I do for my restaurants, for my uh, paying customers, and for my judges. You got to have a great recipe to do all of those. It just depends on who you're feeding. So, yeah, I do the same thing whether I'm feeding it, getting paid for it, if I'm doing it for a judge, if I'm doing it for friends and family. Do you, do you eat barbecue on the regular yourself? If I do, it's going to be something like what y'all doing there now, beef ribs. I like to do uh, – I do a lot of turkeys. I love uh, barbecue turkey. I love it. And uh, we do a lot of steak. I stay away from doing long cooked stuff, pork butts, whole hogs, because I do that all the time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for competitions, for whatever I'm doing. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not a, uh, I love the beef right now. Do you want, are you a sushi guy? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best answer possible. <laughs> you and my Hell dad no. would get along. <laughs> Uh, I was going to ask you what your stance on salads are, but I think I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, lovely coleslaw. This would be all. Cool. This is, no, Dave, this, this this is without a doubt the best barbecue I've ever had. Like, all it's right. the freshest. Yeah. Um, the barbecue capital of America. It. Jim says everyone will say it's themselves. Is that well, and, and he was right. And the thing about it is he was right on the money when he first said that. Is, you know, you go to Texas, they're going to tell you that, you know, Austin and Dallas and Houston, that's that's where it's at. If you get over in Kansas City, you're going to have uh, – uh, in the Missouri, you're going to have KC talking about how great theirs is. Now St. Louis is coming on with its own style of barbecue. They're going to say they got it. You get into Tennessee, and he was right about the hot stuff over there with the chicken especially, but it's still going to be leaning sweet because Memphis, Tennessee, is sweet. Oh. And when you get to the Carolinas, this is where he was wrong. It's more about the vinegar base and the mustard base sauces. Now, is there a reason that it's sweeter in Memphis and more spicy in other places? Is it something to do with the produce there, or is it just that there was a lot of diabetics at the time, or what happened? <laughs> I think I think what you have got the same reason that everything is played when you get to Kansas City, you're looking at a smoky, sweet molasses type flavor, and Memphis being on that same path going to those places, and, and the end result is winding up the same way. I mean, it's the smoky, sweet, uh, more uh, more like uh, the, the sugar cane type syrup than it is the molasses type syrup, which comes from Sagram that you see out in KC. Right. So those two areas are probably the sweetest of any of them. We, me and Forrest, we went once uh, had a bit of a ropey time in Kansas at a barbecue place. Oh yeah, what was the name? It was um, it's a um, Gates. It's a Gates. Gates. Barbecue. It was all right. We um, yeah, we went to Gates Barbecue. What's a ropey time uh, mean? Uh, <laughs> we, we we were out of our element. We we're in a suburb we shouldn't have been in mm. late at night late in at night. Kansas, and we were with uh, we were with um, Cliff Clavin. Cliff, uh, what's John he? John Ratzenberg. John Ratzenberg, who played Cliff Clavin on Cheers. We were with him. And we walked into a bar where we were like, we don't belong here. <laughs> and everyone was staring at us. And they were like, do you boys want a taxi to get out? And we were like, uh, yeah, maybe we do. And <laughs> then barbecue. Jo and yeah, it was great barbecue. <laughs> but we were, I was after the show. It was like 2 in the morning. And then John was like, yeah, I don't think we'll have a problem here if we uh, just stand at the bar like that. And I'm like, I think we should leave, John. Everyone's staring at us. He goes. Eh, hey, just give it time. <laughs> like that. And then someone yelled out, Norm! And he went, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> then they lined up, they're they taking pictures, and they, they sang the Cheers we theme song. We were all singing yeah. the Cheers theme songs. <laughs> we were the hero of the bar, man. <laughs> um, okay, so the uh, difference between barbecue and grilling, we already talked about that. So a pit master. Jim says this is one who runs the pit. I feel like you're just kind of saying it's, that. It's the person who's in charge. That, like who? But you can't just call your, like... Can you call yourself a pit master or does somebody have to make you a pit master? Is there a Jedi like, council is you, what he's are asking. Are united? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll say it's a, I'll go back to the analogy of comedy. Like you could do comedy for a while, but feel guilty calling yourself a comedian. Lots of and people then, don't though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Holy hell. You've seen those people. You know, I'll tell you how you can spot a shit comedian. 
Their profile picture is them doing comedy. <laughs> or or they call themselves comedian, you know, so and so. Like they actually put comedian in the title of their name on Facebook. But yeah, you're yeah. like, ah, you're probably not a real comedian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it felt the same to me. I like, I felt uncomfortable calling myself a pit master until one day I didn't, you know? Uh, so you're not a pit master? I consider myself a pit yeah, master. You're a, you're a pit I've invested master. enough money, time, and energy into this that now I feel uh comfortable doing that, yes. But I didn't at first, just like when I started comedy. In my house, I make my family call me the king. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I'm not an actual king. Oh. No, I don't do that. Master. So in your opinion, <laughs> what do you th- what what makes somebody go from just being a barbecue enthusiast to being able to call themselves a pit master? In my opinion, uh, being a pit master is it's not only conquering and knowing recipes and knowing how to make the meat turn out perfect and, and doing the right injections, marinades and all this type of stuff. So meat selection is part of it being a, a great pit master. It's also fire management. I mean, fire management plays into effect where you don't want fluctuations in your meat temps. I mean, you don't want it going up and down, especially if you're a stick burn. Nowadays, we got the pellet cookers. We can set it, forget it. The gravity feed charcoals, we can set it, forget it. But, you know, I look at somebody that's always constantly trying to expand their knowledge of the craft. And I think being a barbecue pit master is a craft. Uh, you're always learning. And, and not only expanding your knowledge, you might learn something you may never go and try. But the more stuff you learn about it, the better you'll be at it. That person in my book is always craving more knowledge about something is in any genre or any type of uh, situation is the best. And in this case, being the best pit master or being the best person that's cooking barbecue is a pit master. All right. so, Do you use th- thermometers? I use meat thermometers. And I tell people all the time, I get a lot of times when the holidays come around, you always got like People Magazine, you know, CNN has their today, whatever, today show what I want you to get one like one shot pop that's going to, uh, you can put out there for the masses. They can put on Facebook or whatever. That's going to give the, the silver bullet. That's going to make everybody a great pit master. And, and my go-to is, and it's fact, it ain't glorious and it ain't glamorous, but always cook with your meat thermometer. Every protein that you cook has a perfect internal doneness that's out there in every book or any book you can find about internal doneness. Always cook to whatever that protein you're cooking to the perfect internal doneness. That way you'll not only not ever be undercooked or overcooked, but you'll turn out a piece of meat that's always perfect in moisture and perfect in bite. And we'll go, well, so, so for a brisket, what's the perfect temperature? And now, now, Dave, you say it first, and then he may correct you. What's the perfect temperature, Dave? Uh, popular opinion is 203. All right, Myron? That's close, 205. Uh, <laughs> see, got a lot to learn, you, Dave. I want to ask you Dave, about your beef ribs. What do you cook your beef ribs? To? So my beef, my beef ribs. Uh, since today I was putting it in the hot box and bringing it down here, I pulled them at about uh, 195 because I knew they would carry up over 200 degrees right. in the hot box for a few hours. That's where you want to be. I always teach in my class: take your uh, beef ribs to 210 degrees. Oh, really? Uh, but you know beef ribs i feel like uh because there's so much um fat and cartilage in the middle and everything that more than like a brisket a beef ribs you can also just kind of uh put the probe in and and see how it slides in and and whether it's anywhere in that 200 to 210 you you could just tell by by probing it yeah you can and uh, that was something else i was going to say about the meat i use thermal pins is that what you use the thermal pin the instant read I use whatever someone has sent me uh, free recently. <laughs> <laughs> so, so but anyway, yeah, and you're very correct. When you slide, when you're sliding in, I mean, let's just say nine times out of 10, it is 205 or 210, like I like to do them, but you can feel it. And when it slides like butter, that's when you want to pull it. So, yeah. so okay. So uh, what was that lady I watched on the documentary just uses her hand? She does oh, Tootsie. Tootsie doesn't use a thermometer or is she a liar? Come on, tell me, <laughs> tell me. Do you know who Tootsie is? I don't know Tootsie Tootsie's is. This, no, I, know, I saw an I episode on Tootsie <laughs> and Tootsie just puts her old hand on something and goes, that's fine. But I feel like, I don't know if that's a good cooking method. But people rate her. You don't have to throw I, shade. Uh, you don't have to throw shade. I ain't going to throw shade. But let me tell you about my dad, <laughs> Jack Mix and my dad, my mentor, he didn't have, he didn't own a meat thermometer. He didn't have gauges on his pits because they were shovel pits. 
my dad, and I can do it too, but I, I, I'm not as good as my dad was. I don't think I am, and I'm not going to take a chance. But he could feel the meat. He could turn the bones, and when they turned loose, uh, like cooking chicken has, he could take it and that leg bone twist, it was done, and it was done. Mm. But there again, you got to do more than just lay your hand on it. You can't just walk by and say, oh, yeah, it looks, you know, I, I don't agree with that. It's like Reiki. <laughs> Reiki barbecue. You're just like now, <laughs> now, I, what I used to eat the beef. Is that the same as a short rib, or is that a different kind of? Because it well, tasted, next, it tasted very short ribby. So it's this essentially. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mar. It's essentially the same, the same thing. Yes, but when you do it in barbecue, you have to buy it where they call it plated. So it's all still put together, and that's difficult. That's probably the hardest. Beef ribs are not difficult overall for the weekend warrior to try, but buying them correctly is the hardest part. Where they're right. not all you, cut up just like a short rib. Yeah, I, that's right. And what do you want? It's basically a full rack of short ribs uncut. That's what you want. Mm-hmm. And what people always make the mistake with beef ribs is they do not cook them long enough. You can cook a pork rib in three hours. Beef ribs generally, if you're cooking them at, I like to cook at 275 six. on beef ribs, four to six hours, yeah. depending on how they finish out. Here's one of my problems. I, <laughs> I am. I don't know what I want to eat until 30 minutes before I eat it, <laughs> right? And I'm very passionate about what I eat. I couldn't plan this far ahead. I, I you know, I, how to, do, well, do you wake up and go, oh, ribs today, well, and then you start four hours early? Don't you have to go to work and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when it becomes like a passion and, you know, barbecue becomes, it, it's a culture, you know? So that becomes part of the enjoyment is the the process of, when I invite someone over to watch football on Saturday and I do more than just throwing uh, hamburgers on the grill for them, and that's grilling, right? Yeah. Then when I do barbecue for them, I'm in, they come over and it's they're hungry and I go, it's not ready yet, man, and I'm not pulling it until it's ready because if I pull it five degrees too early, it wasn't worth me staying up all night. And so they <laughs> go, oh, I'm really hungry. And then I pull it out and then they're ready to eat it. And I go, nah, I got to let it rest <laughs> at least an hour. And then they're like, come on, man, I'm hungry. And I go, well, you shouldn't have smoked so much weed. <laughs> and, that, and then I finally slice it and they eat it and they know that it was worth waiting for. And they know that I stayed up all night to give them that meal, which is more than just something that took me five minutes of grilling. I think that's part this of exactly the enjoyment. Right. Are, are you offended when someone like me invites people over to their house for a barbecue <laughs> and it's really just a case of beer and we're going to throw some pre-made and eat some Beyond Burgers. Is that, is that upset? Like, no, but you know what I mean? Like when someone goes, because I've had barbecues, but I've never had barbecue at my house. Does that make sense? Uh, offended? No. But I also will want to know what I'm getting into. He it's, makes a good Wagyu cheeseburger. Yeah. It's like when you go to those improv shows and they call it comedy. <laughs> <laughs> um, were, you, were you saying something, Myron? No, but he's right about what he's talking about. I mean, it's a lifestyle. I mean, barbecue is a lifestyle. And what he was talking about, where your friends is always wanting you to pull it off, get it off, get it off and eat. What generally happens in the backyard on beef ribs is generally the man, because it's, you know, that's generally who's doing the grilling, is getting out of there. And after about a half a case of beer, he gets tired of waiting <laughs> because he's not going to eat anyway. He's not going to kill his damn buzz. So the kids and the wife are sitting in there and he just snatches them off. They still, you know, hard as a piece of cardboard. He throws them on the ta- uh, table and keeps drinking. That's how beef ribs get a bad rap. They don't- <laughs> My move now they is if I have people coming over. They don't cook them long enough. Yeah. If I have people coming over, uh, I always have some tri-tip or some chicken wings on standby because I can get those done really fast, and then that holds people over. Right. And then the, when Our the brisket eggs. comes out, they're not going to be full. They're going to eat it. <laughs> That's right. My dog is losing his mind right now. He's just like, <laughs> my dog's just wandering the studio here, like looking up right at the now. tables, like, "What's going on? Somebody throw now, me some is meat." There, is there? I like to wrap my barbecue in a tortilla or have it in a sandwich or something. Is there a correct way to eat? Is there any sides where you go, "Fucking idiots!" Like you know what I mean? Because I always get the mac and cheese, and I get a right. coleslaw, or I get beans. And now I see all the color, the spinachy type things, and I know. So I get the mac and cheese, coleslaw, and beans. Is there a traditional sides that you're meant to eat it with, a special way you're meant to eat it? Is there anything that's sacrilege? Like, you know how there's people who are like, mm-hmm. if you have ketchup on a hot dog, they lose their fucking shit, right? Is there anything that's sacrilege when eating barbecue? Um, 
Not really. I mean, I've never seen. Oh, I take that back. I saw somebody put damn mayonnaise on it. Uh, <laughs> people are it. using mayonnaise as binder now. Yeah, I love mayonnaise. But yeah, the thing about too. it is, I, I love a ham sandwich. You know, boiled ham or whatever you're going to do it for mayonnaise. But you don't. I mean, put barbecue sauce on it. Why in the hell would you want to put mayonnaise on it? I don't understand I, it. Is, I, is, I, is ketchup a, a no-no? <laughs> I wouldn't put ketchup on it either. Nah. I think probably the only answer to that is if you go to a restaurant and they serve you like brisket and it's got a ton of sauce on it, then you know they're hiding something, mm. right? Yeah. Now, a uh, it, it, real barbecue joint would probably just have some sauce on the side and let you sauce it. I don't like the sauce at all, except for my pork ribs. Um, I'll have a, a light dusting of sauce about an hour before it's done and then and let it cook into it. Or a pork sandwich, a pulled pork sandwich, I'll put sauce on it. I love like a bit that. of pulled and pork. Leftovers. Am I allowed? That's when I hit the barbecue sauce is when it's leftovers. I like to add cheese to everything. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you what we're doing right now. We started it. Uh, we came up with it and started it this week at my restaurant in Alexandra, and we'll be doing it in the one in Hoboken, too. We're doing our brisket mac and cheese sandwich. Ooh. And let me tell you about that. Now, it's off the damn chain. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it on Instagram. Hey, uh, yeah. It looks amazing. Yes, I mean, it, it's off the chain. And and what we do, we take some of our hickory barbecue sauce, some of the au jus out of the brisket. We slice brisket, but we'll take the slices, we'll chop it, put a big scoop of our mac and cheese on there, put the brisket on top, put a little bit of hickory sauce. We take our toasted buns with butter. All the, we toast them on the flat top. Boom, with a dill pickle. That is awesome. I don't, eat, I don't eat pickles, but I'm on board for everything else. Is <laughs> is there is, – what's the dessert of – of barbecue where you go, I'll have a brownie and ice cream. What is the dessert that's like renowned? That wraps up the meal. That wraps up the meal. Or should you not have banana, dessert? Banana pudding. Yep. <laughs> Jim, Jim hates bananas. I hate that's bananas a- with a fucking portion. <laughs> <laughs> they do bread pudding too, but bananas. No, I, like I love bread, bread pudding. pudding. I like bread pudding. Yeah, can you do well, something? My next, one, my next pick is peach cobbler. Yeah, I can eat, I can eat a cobbler. Yeah, like yeah, a cobbler. A cobbler. Like Wait, a cobbler. so banana pudding really? Is you yeah, yeah. you reacted like this is this is. I knew no. the answer before yeah. I said it because I've been to a, lot, a bunch of barbecue that's joints. So like funny. In, in I've a never I'm a big that. fan of sticky toffee pudding. Is that uh, <laughs> tiramisu? <laughs> <laughs> tiramisu. Hey, I'm cooking this for days here. here. Here's a question I asked Jim: Is there anything you can't barbecue? And he said, uh, "Breakfast cereal." That was it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you'd be surprised. <laughs> I would tell you, I mean, theoretically, yeah, you can you can barbecue just about any protein out there. Let me tell you this though: there's some proteins in my uh, in my mind you don't need to barbecue, and one of them is uh, gator tail or anything reptile like a snake or whatever. The more you cook it, like you just take a gator tail, they're about that big around, and you put it on that grill. The more you cook it, the cheerier it gets. Mm. If any of y'all have eaten like rattlesnake bites or gator tail bites. If you notice, they're little pieces and they've been battered with a deep fry. Mm. When you start grilling a big old thick chunk of that, it doesn't tender out like a piece of beef does or a piece of pork does. It doesn't have any much fat in there to render out. And the more you chew it, the bigger it gets in your mouth. I do not grill or eat reptiles. Have you ever thrown a shrimp on the barbie? <laughs> yes, I have. I, 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 love, I love barbecuing prawns. I don't call them shrimp. No Australians I call love them those. Yeah, I love a barbecue prawn, man. Oh, do you do it? Okay, I, I have debates with my wife. You do them in the shell, right? You do them full body, you barbecue them, right? Yes, yeah. for sure. See? Um, so <laughs> I, this, I should have asked this at the beginning, but I asked Jim, how do you smoke meat? He said, low and slow. Yeah, man. Give me a point. Or is, that, is there like a, just a general? Yeah. He said he went hot, I mean, yeah, he goes I mean, hot and fast. That, I do hot and fast. I mean, but low and slow is a, is a correct <laughs> answer too. But I mean, like my beef briskets and my pork butts, uh, we're cooking at the, in KC this weekend at the uh, American Royal. And I put my briskets on and we're cooking at 325. And butts, pork butts. Now I back it down once I pull them off. I cook a 20 pound brisket, uh, eight pound butts. I get them done in four hours. Do you ever walk past fields of cows or pigs and they point at you and go, stay away from that man? <laughs> As a bad man. <laughs> no, but I walk by fields of pigs and cows and I say, he looks mighty tasty. <laughs> I have a question. I have, I'm always a big, I'm from Georgia and I, a ton of ribs. You can't see like, Jack, he's off camera. They're, they're my talking. favorite food, but uh, 
problem I've always had is like at, at Fat Matt's Rib Shack, for instance, if you know that place. Um, when they serve ribs, they give like a piece of just like bread that's just underneath the ribs and just soaks up all the White sauce. Bread. What's um, the purpose of that? Is it just to soak up the sauce? Are you supposed to eat it? What's the purpose? I love that when they do that. Well, uh, really so to soak up any of the juices and stuff that's coming out of not necessarily the sauce and not have fat or grease running everywhere. I don't know if I'm using the paper or butcher paper when they're serving it to you or whatever, but it keeps it from soaking through into the paper. How they serve it to you? Um, I think it's just the ribs on top and the bread underneath. So yeah, I wasn't yeah sure. but is it on a tray or a plate? Oh, or is it, it a was, paper, like butcher paper. Uh, when they... I think it's on a plate. If you eat there, when they and then when you order it to go, they wrap it in paper, but they still put the bread inside. Oh, I like the metal right. tray with the paper. Yeah, that's the way to go. Anyway, well, if you go to my restaurant, that's what you get. Yeah, the good. metal Ooh. tray and the paper. Yeah, man. You know what? I, I'm a big fan of when like you get the Nashville hot chicken. They put a bit of bread underneath just for the hot sauce to drip through. That's good eating. That's the bread pudding, right? Yeah, that's that's <laughs> good eating. I tell you what, though, that hot chicken. We are having a revolution of that. There used to be there's like five hot chicken places within a mile radius yeah. of my house yeah. now. They're fucking everywhere. When I was in Nashville, I used to go. We got to go get some hot chicken. We're in Nashville now. I got Dave's. I got 24 hour hot chicken. I got another place called Clucking Chicken. Clucking Blaze. Clucking Blaze. Clucking Blaze. Blaze. I, they're all over the place. When I first moved to this country, you were all Chipotle people. <laughs> Everything was Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle this, Chipotle that. Now you've all gone hot chicken. That's the fat at the moment. Is it to, is it here to stay, Myron? <laughs> uh, well, let me tell you what. The first hot chicken place that I ever went to, this is before there was any, and then you'll have everybody jumping up down Nashville, uh, was Gus's Fried Chicken yeah. in Memphis, Tennessee. And I was going there 20 plus years ago, and they wasn't no hot chicken places. In. Now, there's a guest, I believe, down in Nashville. But back then, you didn't have uh, any princes or whatever name over there in, in Nashville. Now you got hot chicken everywhere. But Gus has started that. Mm. And uh, I mean, it's been around a while. But now it's just like taking off where that's what everybody wants. But I don't think it's going to stick as hot as it is right now because somebody else is going to find something else out they're going to do. Uh, is, is there any good barbecue in California? I was going to ask Right that. there. Well, yeah, we got Dave here. Yeah, he's, he's doing his great, great barbecue. There's baby blues. I got a baby blues. Well, because okay. like, my one of my best friends is a huge barbecue enthusiast, and he, that's his biggest complaint is just like, Barbecue in LA is shit. Bloodsos has fantastic brisket. See, I only because I, 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 like I live in much. Britain. There's no good Indian food in America. Mm. I haven't seen anything yeah. that's. But I mean, part. as far as like at competitions, is there anyone you ever see? Oh, that person's from California or something, or is that generally not? I mean, uh, I, I don't know about barbecue restaurants anywhere. I don't go when I'm out of town. Like I'm going to be in Kansas City all this weekend, and I won't go eat at none of the barbecue places for a couple reasons. I mean. I, as you know, I've I, I told you, I mean, I'm not a big going and eating there. And if I go in, if anybody recognizes me, mm -hmm. I might order a little old barbecue sandwich. And the next thing I know, the pit master, a.k.a. your chef, he's bringing me out all of this food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And wants me to sit it down in front of me. Not only does he want me to sample it and critique it, him and like five of the sous chefs are standing around the table sitting there looking at me. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. People tell Watching me jokes eat. all the fucking time. Yeah, take a picture but, of you, put it on the wall. Hey, my yeah, next one is there. Eating see, see, that's I the mean, scam. Yeah. That's the scam I run is that I don't have anywhere near the credibility Myron has. And I try, tr he tries to avoid it. I try to make that happen. I'm tweeting the restaurant, <laughs> like, gonna go by here today. And then the, <laughs> I hope that they realize who I am and they're like, Dave, hey, let me give you some free barbecue. Calling oh, the paparazzi right. on yeah. yourself. You wish. I like the summer <laughs> sausage. You, 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 the, those sausages. I love that, summer sausage. Oh, I fucking love me a summer What's sausage. A summer sausage. Tell me, the, tell me there's no pork in there because I'm what? still eating it on the slide. <laughs> I know it's packed with what, pork. What's in a summer sausage? Most of what's in a summer sausage is venison. Uh, yeah. A true summer sauce is venison. Oh. Yeah, those ones they cut up for you. The thing oh, they put good. it on your plate. They're really good. They're I mean, they're really, really good. good. I mean, they're yeah, they're really good. I mean, a true summer sausage is venison. Um, the barbecue. I, I, whenever you're eating one, you go, "What's oh, so summery and light?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, the last question I asked him was about barbecue competitions. I asked, what, "What what can you win?" He said, "A trophy. It looks like a poker or an apron with boobs on it." <laughs> or, or, or a spatula or something. What, something can you, that says kiss the little chef with the putting down <laughs> to your penis. There, there's, there's real prizes at these competitions, right? They're very serious. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like at the, the world championship, we just won for the fifth time in Memphis, the Memphis May World Championship. 
uh, you get a, uh, the grand champion trophy is like about six foot tall. Uh, one of the pictures that's on Facebook is telling me hoisting it over my head because I was excited. And uh, also, we get these rings. I got oh, five of these. Yeah. Cool. Super Bowl rings. World Series. I got five of those, and that was about a 50 grand purse. Do you ever you wear know, them all that. at once yeah. like you missed the T? <laughs> uh, matter of fact, uh, my publishing house that does my books, they got some pictures of me holding like, yeah, like I'm some barbecue thug or some bullshit. <laughs> but, uh, barbecue thug or Liberace. <laughs> <laughs> <But>, Myron, <laughs> the, the prize is the, the prize money, but then also I'm sure you get an immediate bump in sales oh, of sure. rubs and sponsorships oh, yeah. and all that yes. kind of stuff. And let me tell you something now. Uh, back in the day when I first started doing TV, you know, I used to get paid upwards, of, uh, you know, around 10 grand an episode, but it's got to the point where if I do them now, I wouldn't charge nothing for them because I see a direct result into my sales of everything. And that's where you, if, when I win a championship, I mean, I could see it. I see my cook schools roll. I see everything happening because, you know, what they need to say about NASCAR, went on Sunday, sales on Monday, <laughs> right. same thing. Well, speaking of that, MyronMixon.com, as I mentioned, you can get all the sauces and rubs, there's apparel, find out about the cooking school, books, tools, et cetera. You got everything for sale on here for barbecue. Um, so check that out for sure. And, uh, also I want to get Dave Williamson. Thanks for cooking on the meat. You have, right, a, you right. have a rub yourself, right? Right. right. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just started selling my own rub. I had, so I, it was one of those things where I didn't want to make a rub because I was, like I said, I'm careful. I don't want to be like, I'm an expert, but so many people asked me for one that I felt like I was leaving money on the table. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I made a meat Dave. That's it. So I figured. Uh, I am comfortable calling myself an expert of cooking on the road because I bring a smoker in the tour bus when I tour with Bert. And if I go and I'm traveling around, I just did a two month, um, tour. I got a fucking forest. He doesn't cook me shit. <laughs> <laughs> forest eats all the food. Yeah, yeah, forest yeah, knows I, where to get I put you in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's got a good radar. <laughs> but I, I just did a two-month tour where I did comedy in barbecue restaurants around the country. So that I was, was when you're at where we're mixing. Yeah, that's Myron, I went to, to yeah. Memphis in May. And, yeah. and so I was like, you know what? I, I do think I'm pretty good at mixing up an all-purpose rub that you could put on anything, you know, as What's you're traveling. Going, it's meat, so. Dave. What is a slow? Is there a No, it just says all-purpose rub. Oh, meat, Dave. Just meat, not, Dave. Not, yeah. not, uh, not rubbing you the um, right way. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but there are some great slogans <laughs> and some great team names in the world of barbecue. I get Myron's got a professional sounding name. He's Jack South, right? But there's Jack's one. Jack's Old South. Jack's Old South, excuse me. Well, it sounds like uh, fucking wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> but, there, but there's ones out there like uh, Pork Illustrated, right? And, Ooh. Uh, Pablo Esco Barbecue was one of my oh, favorites. Nice. <laughs> Snoutcast. There's some funny ones. Um, Myron, this is part of the show where we have dinner party facts, we call it. Is there something like very obscure or interesting about barbecue that most people might not know that you can tell our listeners? Well, I mean, uh, one thing, and, and it, but it may not be as obscure as I think it is. You know, when you, I love to cook lamb chops, my wife, she mm -hmm. loves them. Well, love lamb. To, be, to be able to get lamb, the lamb or the sheep has to be one year or less. When you get above one year old, you go into mutton. Yeah. Oh, I know. I always yeah. feel I always feel guilty because Australians eat lamb at the same rate that you guys would eat fucking beef. Like we, eat, I, I eat it every week as a kid, and now it's like oh, it's babies. Okay. No, but when I was <laughs> when I went to Australia with it and New Zealand too, and we had it, I, I never ate it here because I wasn't that in the. Land. And then when you eat it in Australia, and New Zealand, we have the best sheep in the world. It tasted so good. It we was like because like, that's you guys are into it so much more there. But well, we just have them um, standing around. Uh, but to me though, mutton is nasty. I mean, I love lamb. When you start getting an older sheep, when they get up at one, two, three years old, they're nasty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds bad. All right, Myron. Well, thank you very much for being on the podcast. Again, go to MyronMixon.com. And uh, for anything that you, if you want to go to his school or you want to go to his restaurants, you want to buy any of his rubs, sauces, apparel, anything, everything's on there. Watch his TV shows and uh, follow him on all the social medias, Instagram, Um and Twitter. And uh, also, Dave, thanks for cooking the meat. Go to, to Dave Williamson on all of his. Oh, that's your handle, right? On At Dave W Comedy or Dave Williamson.com. I got to yeah. thank you both for being on the podcast. Yeah, this hands is awesome. Down, hands down, my favorite podcast. I haven't enjoyed this uh, uh, podcast uh, since Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> we had a Cheese episode. Uh, that's that was what you a, ate on. Yeah. That was <laughs> a fun day. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> thank, thank you, Myron. Thank you for taking time out. Thanks, I know y'all. you're a busy guy and all that type of stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever at a party and someone says you can barbecue everything, including gator, go, well, I don't know about that, and walk away. <laughs> Good night, Australia. <laughs>